top story tonight, a nation afflicted with unprecedented gun violence and systemic calamity is focused squarely on balloons. We cover it all in our new segment, Balloon 11, the day the Mylar fell. Since shooting down the original Chinese spy balloon, the greatest military in history continues to unleash its might against an invading armada of inflatable doohickeys recently sending three additional balloons straight to hell. The nation is thrilled to finally face an opponent it can defeat, though modern balloon warfare is not easy. The U.S. military jet that downed an unknown object in the Michigan sky on Sunday missed on its first attempt. It wasn't clear where the missile that missed ultimately landed. The second missile took down the target. Each of the missiles cost more than four hundred thousand dollars that sounds expensive until you consider the millions in health care costs if that balloon deflated fell to earth and some guy ate it on a dare here is national security council coordinator john kirby calming a nation gripped by manufactured crisis they did not appear to have any self-propulsion so the likely hypothesis is that they were being moved by the prevailing winds. Kirby there using every lesson learned over his 28 years of decorated military service to explain how wind works. Kirby then appeared on CNN to warn our enemies that our trillion dollar defense apparatus has the tactical capability to seamlessly pivot to Balloonovision. The NORAD uh, staff adjusted, adjusted the, the parameters for the radar systems, the sensitivities, um, to look for things that were low, I'm sorry, slow, high uh, and small. When you adjust your sensitivities on the radar, uh, you're likely to see more of those kinds of contacts. For those not familiar with military jargon, he said we set the settings to balloon and now we see balloons. Joining me now to escape the clutches of the evil Lord headlines by putting our analysis ship into hyperscoops is Democratic strategist who falls on the floor and rolls around laughing when a rich person tells her a joke, Lydia Parker. Good evening. Chief Washington Bureau Chief who's been sleeping in his car after the gas meter guy just kind of moved in, Jonathan Keene. Hello. Chief Field Correspondent who thinks French is just really fast English, James Smartwood Jr. Hey, Dad. And CBS News Chief Washington Correspondent and tuning out contributor whose voice should only be allowed on TV after 10 p.m., Major Garrett. Thanks for joining us, Major. Always a pleasure. Wow. Great to have you back. Now, Major, let's start with you. What do these balloons want, and do they only understand force? It's a really good day in Washington when senators and members of the Pentagon staff say, with all due seriousness, these were not aliens. So we can cross that off the list, at least for now. And it's important to note that for the Biden administration, the first balloon, now followed by three others, creates the opportunity. We would call that a balloon crisis. And all administrations like crises to resolve even if they are balloon shaped. Look, we must modernize our military to fight the battles of the future. Our defense department needs a surface to air custodian. Now, I just hope we don't rush to war like we did after Secretary Colin Powell showed the United Nations that vial of balloon. I, I don't think we can limit our response to shooting trash out of the sky, which is why I've been going nuts on my recycling with a baseball bat. Uh, thank you so much for your service there, Junior. Now, oh, speaking no of purposeless aggression against non-threatening objects, the Republican Party and its media allies have been focusing on core conservative issues like candy commercials, gas stoves, and Disney rides. It paints the picture of a Republican Party that is lost and needs to do the inner work required to form a mature, healthy relationship with the American people people. Here with advice is Dr. Orna Goralnik, a psychologist featured on the Showtime series Couples Therapy. Thank you so much for joining us, doctor. Hello. Now, doctor, we have, let's say, a friend looking for advice. They've been striking out a lot most recently in November. Uh, they're paranoid. They think everyone's attacking them, trying to replace them, rant on and on about Moana. How do you pull someone like that out of a tailspin? Um, it's not easy to get through to a person when they're in a paranoid state. A person mm -hmm. in a paranoid state is obviously protecting something very fragile inside. So, mm. you know, you when you try to come at them directly, for example, with facts or trying to convince them logically or rationally about how irrational they may sound or how their fears might be irrational or how defensive they seem, that's not going to work. They're just going to get tighter and tighter and more defensive. As a psychoanalyst, one way that we think about it is that um, there's all sorts of vulnerabilities or injuries or bad feelings about the self or aggression that is not owned that the paranoid person needs to project onto their environment. <laughs> 
onto the person near them or onto there. a group. So they're constantly in a state of projecting to avoid their own vulnerability. And I should also mention, you know, they're very hung up on their ex. He's this toxic, wealthy, unfaithful con man living in Palm Beach. I mean, sure, the sex was incredible, but how do they move on from that? So their ex might have become an object of projection that they become obsessed with, yes? Ah, like their daddy. It's like a daddy figure. Yeah, like a daddy figure or a mommy projection, but it's a projection of all sorts of ah. stuff. Now, you know, you are all casting judgment on Republicans for hysteria over President Biden, but I do not believe that hysteria is misplaced. What are you, what are you, what are you talking about, Keen? Sure, President Biden is nice enough, but what about his other unholy form? What was that? It's too late. He's already inside. Stop it, Keen. You're scaring Junior. What's up now? Oh, oh no. God. Oh, God. Okay. What do you want from us? If you have to, just take Keen. You know what I want reasonable bipartisan solutions that solve inequities in our economy and provide relief to those who are struggling. Oh, oh man. You know, I, I, I have to say the Biden monster there seems pretty reasonable. He's just saying the trite problems Democrats have been repeating for decades. Major, do you think voters buy the story Republicans are telling them about the threat of Joe Biden? The voters who showed up in the midterm elections, wow, the dog is really animated. Uh, Keen, you have really scared this animal to a <laughs> level of kind of an alarming frenzy. Sorry to jump in here, but Dr. Grelnick, after so many years, how do you keep your marriage interesting? Well, by the fact that we're different from each other, it is fresh and exciting. If you try to um. swoosh it all down and make it all the same so everyone looks the same and does the same mm -hmm. thing, it's gonna get pretty dead. Uh, I'll just dress like a fireman. <laughs> <laughs>